Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your valuable time and association this morning. Please take over the call, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 1, Verse 33. Kasyava Kuta Ayataha Kasmarasya Nisedata. Kim Deva Upa Deva Ya Yuyam Kim Siddha Sattamaha Translation So what is happening here it is a uh, Ajamil apparently has not left his body but he's about to leave his body and the Yamadudas are about to take him away to Yamaraj for punishment but the Vishnu Dudas arrive at the same time, and then there is this discussion, who does the soul of Yamara, uh, Ajamil belong to? And so here's that discussion continued. Dear sirs, these are the Yamadudas speaking, whose servants are you? Where have you come from? And why are you forbidding us to touch the body of Ajamiya. Are you demigods from the heavenly planets? Are you sub demigods or are you the best of devotees? Purport. The most significant word used in this verse is Siddha Sattama, which means the best of the perfect. In the Bhagavad Gita 7 3, it says, Manushanam Sahasre Shuhu Kastyat Vyatatat Siddhyaye. Out of millions of persons, one may try to become siddha, perfect, or in other words, self-realized. A self-realized person knows that he is not the body, but the spirit soul, a hum brahmasmi. At the present moment, practically everyone is unaware of this fact. But one who understands this has attained perfection and therefore is called siddha. Siddha means perfect. When one understands that the soul is part and parcel of the Supreme Soul, and one thus engages in devotional service of the Supreme Soul, one becomes Siddha Sattama. One is then eligible to live in the Vaikuntha planets or Krishna Loka. The word Siddha Sattama therefore refers to a liberated, pure devotee. Since the Yamadudas are servants of Yamaraj, who was also one of the Siddha Sattamas, they knew that the Siddha Sattama is above the demigods and sub-demigods, and indeed above all living entities within this material world. The Yamadudas therefore inquired why the Vishnu Dudas were present when a sinful man was going to die. It should be noted that Ajamiya was not yet dead, for the Yamadudas were trying to snatch the soul from his heart. They could not take the soul, however, and therefore Ajamiya was not yet dead. This will be revealed in the later verses. Ajamiya was simply in an unconscious state when the argument was in process between the Yamadudas and the Vishnadudas. The conclusion of the argument was to be a decision regarding who would claim the soul of Ajamiya. In the Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Um Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvi Namaha Tama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasai Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pachari, my near Visay Sasunya Vadi, Pastyatya Dei Sitarine, Banchakalpa Tarubis Cha, 
Kripa Sindhu Vaevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Simasa Vigor Bhaktivindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so this is uh, one of the more interesting dilemmas uh, that's based on spiritual principles that is being uh, narrated here in this section of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it's interesting because Ajamiya, apparently his whole life from the time he was a young man to his present situation was very, very sinful. His sinful activities are mentioned in other places throughout the scriptures as quite severe, that he was committing criminal activity in order to obtain money so he could support his wife, who was a very, what we might say, uh, highly uh, stay, positioned prostitute. Mm -hmm. She wanted luxury and he didn't have it. And so he was kidnapping, he was stealing, he was robbery and robbing. He was committing many thievery, thefts, all to support his wife and the, ch the children that he was having from his wife also. Ajamil's previous life was pious, that is, early part of his life, but somehow due to wrong association, he happened to see something he shouldn't have seen, being an innocent brahmana, he became somewhat uh, distracted from his prayer for life by witnessing a sudra and a sudrani that was now to become his wife was the sudrani uh, embracing in a very licentious way in public which is hardly ever heard of practically never heard of in the vedic times in the time of ajamil's presence now it's something that goes on regularly even in india but what uh, what he saw caused him to change his whole direction in life and his lusty desires were aroused and he wanted to fulfill them and therefore he wound up in this relationship and now he's his whole life is simply one sinful activity after another um, he gave up all of his religious practice everything simply to center around enjoying the presence of his wife and the family that they created. Now he's about to die. <laughs> and therefore his um, judgment is about to come up. Now the Yamadutas, sometimes devotees don't, they think this is some kind of fictitious personality in the Yamadutas. But actually, these people are real. <laughs> they are agents of Yamaraj. They're quite fierce looking. And they uh, come to people who have not come to spiritual life or who are sinful. Uh, in other words, people who are pious, very pious, and devotees do not see the Yamadutas. The people who are sinful, and to commit sin is very easy nowadays, so many ways one can commit sinful activities. And it goes on today as the ordinary course of life to perform intoxication, illicit sex, um, eating fleshy food, 
and uh, performing a lot of time and even cheating in business, which is another form of gambling. So all of these things are now commonplace in the world. And so the Amadutas have a lot of work to do at the present moment. <laughs> there has been accounts of by devotees who have experienced other people seeing the Amadutas just before they died. And uh, it's not something that we should take lightly. <laughs> Therefore, one has to understand that this material world is meant for suffering. And anyone who tries to enjoy separate from Krishna or separate from the Supreme Lord himself will fall into an activity of sinfulness and therefore will be subjected to many types of suffering, which culminates in being taken to Yamaraj by these personalities. And then uh, they are punished and then they're given a new body and then they begin again their material existence. So, but here, somehow or other, and it's explained that Ajamil, he had a, the good fortune of naming his most youngest of all children, Narayan. And he was very attached. And you see, this is quite common where uh, the the youngest child becomes the attachment for the grandfather or even for the father. And therefore, his excessive attachment to his son for, uh, encouraged him to constantly want to be around his little child. And so he would call him in different ways. So at the time of death, all he could think of was his son and therefore he called in a very helpless way the name of his child but somehow by the grace of god he named his child narayan which is a very powerful name of the supreme personality of godhead and when he called he called in a helpless condition calling out for his son, but somehow he remembered at the time of calling, the name of Narayan actually reminded him of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore he chanted in Nama Bas, that was not pure devotion, but free from all uh, material, uh, well, free from all offenses. He chanted offenselessly the name of the Lord. And therefore, this, the Vishnu Duda showed up. The Vishnu Dudas came. And now you see there is this discussion between the two of them. And uh, here, the, the uh, Yamadubas are questioning well, you're a party. We can see you are very elevated persons. You're demigods, some demigods, or the best of the devotees. You don't belong here. This is our work. Why have you come? And at the same time, why are you interfering with our, our service to Yamaraj? So the discussion will go on and we'll see. Now it's interesting to note that the soul, this is a general statement, the soul is never contaminated by material energy. The soul cannot be entangled in material energy and the soul cannot be liberated from that entanglement either. It is an illusionary concept that goes on as a feature of consciousness in the material world. In other words, when the living entity tries to enjoy material energy, which is not possible, because the living entity is by nature spiritual, and material nature is temporary and material, well, in that term of enjoyment, what comes in contact with the material energy is the mind and the senses, which is also material. And therefore, when the mind and the senses come in contact with the material energy, the soul thinks it is enjoying the material world, but it doesn't touch the material world. 
So it's an interesting position to understand, and this is mentioned in the 11th canto when Krishna speaks this to Uddhava, that the soul is never liberated or never entangled, but it just thinks. And the example is like a dream. When you go to sleep at night, you create a whole uh, program of activities on a subtle level. And you may also experience happiness and distress in that dream. But it's simply a dream. It's simply the creation of the mind. That's all. So our material life is also a creation of the mind. <laughs> it's not any different than our night dream. We dream that we are something else than who we are actually are. We're dreaming, we are pure spiritual energy, part and parcel of Krishna. We do not touch the material energy. But in our desire to enjoy this material energy, we activate the mind and senses and we come in contact with this material energy. And we experience a type of happiness and suffering based on the quality of that contact. And it's just like in the dream, when the mind takes us to a subtle existence, we experience a pleasant dream or maybe an unpleasant dream. And we're living in that, re that so-called reality, but it's illusion. We call dreams an illusion, but this waking existence is another form of dreaming because the soul is thinking different than its actual existence. So when the soul comes in contact with the material energy through the mind and senses, it becomes illusion and therefore it gets entangled. So the entanglement is an illusion, but it is real at the same time because it brings the soul into a, a state of so-called suffering, but it's not suffering. Just like when you suffer in a dream, you don't really suffer, but you actually experience suffering. So the solution is to engage in devotional service. And then the soul comes in contact with its pure essence, that is Krishna himself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then the body, the mind, and the senses become subordinate to the soul's desire and are used in the service of the Lord. Now, Ajamil, he is so much entangled in this illusionary state of trying to enjoy that now his uh, mind and body are going to be dragged away along with him, his soul, to a place of punishment. And that punishment is another form of dream state. Everything in the material world is a dream. It has nothing to do with us, the soul. But because we accept this material world as a reality, we suffer and enjoy in contact with different activities, depending on the quality of that contact, such as in the mode of ignorance, we suffer tremendously and cause suffering to others. In the mode of passion, we suffer. And in the mode of goodness, we, we feel some relief from suffering and therefore we, we think that we are happy. But it's another form of illusion. It's a false sense of happiness because it's temporary and it's based on the mind and senses again. So the, uh, therefore here, and going back to the essence of this particular uh, exchange here, um, the Yamadudas, they are, uh, they're bewildered. Why are these people coming? They have nothing to do with, you know, anything sinful and they're interfering with our service. And then you'll see as, it, as the verses go on, there's a nice discussion. Who does the soul of Ajamil actually belong to? And this particular pastime is one of the most important pastimes in the Bhagavatam because it shows the mercy of the Lord in the form of chanting his holy name and how that power of pure chanting can relieve one of all forms of sinful reaction 
and elevate one's consciousness to the spiritual platform. But first of all, we have to understand that we, the living entities, have nothing to do with this material world. Our life in the material world is like a dramatic performance. A dramatic performance is a stage play where the actors play parts that they are not. But in order to make the stage play very uh, interesting for those who watch it and for themselves, they play their part perfectly. But at the same time, they know that they are not the part they play. Sometimes even in dramatic performances, people get so absorbed in the, in the part they play, they actually identify with that part and become what we say, absorbed in that part. But here, so in the same way we, we're absorbed in we're a man or we're a woman, or we're from this particular culture, and this, these are all what we call temporary designations upon, supplanted upon the soul due to our association with the material energy and by having a material body. Because life after life, Mitche Maya Ravase Kachyo Beshe, Kachyo Habu Bubu Vajiv Krishna Dase Vishwash. Every life after life, we get different bodies. So we're in a particular body this life, and we've been in different bodies in previous lives. And if we somehow fail to reach perfection spiritually in this life, we'll get another body to again perform activities in this material world. So in any case, the soul has nothing to do with the material world. But still, it's thinking it does, and therefore, in that illusion, it suffers and enjoys. So, uh, but the uh, the means to get out is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. One who absorbs themselves daily enchanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and finds time throughout the day to chant also as much as possible, will gradually free themselves from this illusion of material suffering and material happiness. These things will stop. And when we'll attain, as Rishabh Dev teaches, Nayam deho deho bhajan near loke kastan kama arati vid bhujan ve tapo divyam putra kagen said one Brahma sokam tamanantam Brahma sokyam Brahma so Brahma means spiritual sokyam means happiness that material that spiritual happiness is an antam it's unlimited and so the unlimited happiness that the soul is looking for and it can be found only in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, situated on glorifying the Lord by chanting his holy name, hearing about the Lord, and uh, uh, engaging in various devotional activities. Then one is rightly situated, one is back in their normal position. Again, although we are not physically, or not, we not, haven't reached the spiritual world. Uh, in, we haven't reached the spiritual world yet. Still, we perform activities that are conducive to spiritual consciousness. And by developing that consciousness, then Taktwa Deham Purna Janma, the 19 Mameti Surjuna, the soul goes back home, back to Godhead, and performs the same activities it's doing, but in a perfected arena in the spiritual world, in the personal association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, where life is eternal, full of knowledge and unlimited happiness. <laughs> so that is our birthright. And therefore, <clears throat> we can learn from this particular verse, how one, or this particular pastime, how easy or how dangerous the material energy is that even such a 
personality as a Jambia, who was a pious Brahmin, and he had no sinful activities throughout his youth. But somehow or other, the little deviation in consciousness, a wrong association, therefore, wrong association leads to wrong desires, and wrong, wrong desires leads to wrong activities. And wrong activities leads to a reaction which causes one to suffer. <clears throat> so therefore, one has to keep and cultivate uh, saintly association. And therefore, that association is elevated because it takes one to uh, one's consciousness of devotion. And therefore, one should avoid what we say, asat. When uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was with uh, Sanatana Goswami, uh, Sanatana Goswami said, what is the first duty of a devotee? And Lord Chaitanya said, Asat Sangha Tayagya e Vaishnava Achar. The first duty of a devotee is to give up association of the non-devotees and to associate with devotees. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made that an emphasis when, Mah when Sanatana Goswami asked him this question, what is the first duty? And from that, everything else uh, 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 unfolds. In other words, our Krishna consciousness unfolds nicely in the association of other devotees. So here uh, we can see how a little wrong association in a particular situation that, you know, he didn't even know he was going to be victimized that day. He had no idea. So this is the precarious and uncertain nature of material energy. Therefore, one should be very careful in association with the material energy. One should never think they're okay or situated nicely because material energy can drag anyone away with a little inattention or a little wrong activity can force one to, uh, to become victimized by a wrong association. Okay, so here, again, back to the uh, statement here. The, the Vishnu duties appeared. The Yama duties are wondering why you are interfering with our service. And so that'll go on like that. So, And Prabhupada wants to emphasize that very few people, by like quoting that verse from the Bhagavad Gita, Manusyanam, Sahasra Isu Kastid Yatati Siraya. It's very rare that one attains perf perfection. In other words, self-realization. What is self-realization? One knows that he's not the body, that he is actually part and parcel of Krishna, and that he is, uh, his happiness is on the spiritual platform. Okay. And then he takes the word Siddha Satama, Therefore, one who has actually reached perfection or a pure devotee of the Lord. We have Siddha, perfect, free from all material contamination, and then take it to a higher state where one is um, now uh, on the platform of pure consciousness, which is the constitutional position of all living entities. All living entities are pure devotees of the Lord only covered by the material energy. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. No pronoun to you, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Very beautiful class, Maharaj. I was wondering uh, how busy Yamadutas are these days, because with all uh, all what is going on on this planet Earth, uh, there is no lack of jobs with Yamdutas for sure. They'll be 
going around the people like uh, Ajamila, like me. So <laughs> thanks, <man. laughs> Yeah, that's an. I mean, that's a very important statement you made. A sinful life continues. And more and more living entities are needed to do the work of Yamaraj. So anybody, anybody needs a job. <laughs> of course, we don't recommend that one. <laughs> Very beautiful class, Maharaj. And you beautifully explained how in different modes we can think that we are happy. But uh, that is also an illusion of being happy in different modes. And uh, nicely, you said how we connect us through I, me, and mine. That's probably the biggest mistake we do as human being. And as Sheila Prabhupada said in, uh, in uh, the, the purport, you also said in your class, this is uh, an amazing opportunity in this human form. It's very difficult to get, very rare to get. And we should endeavor to ask every time why we are here and try to get out of this world back to Godhead, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Amen. Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And lastly, we spoke about the association, so beautiful. Association matters, Maharaj, we all know. As soon as we are out of even this small group, Bhakti Sangha, and we go out to our jobs and our businesses, we try, Maya just grabs us right away, and we try to forget and just, uh, you know, it's, it's so strong. Maya is so strong. So devotee association is so important, Maharaj. That's so true. Thank you so much, Maharaj. What a beautiful class again. Very beautiful insights you gave all the time you come, come to the class, Maharaj. Maharaj, with your permission, can we go to the question answer session? I already see a hand raised. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Anita Mataji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Dandavar Pranams. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavar Pranams, a very wonderful power pack uh, class. Uh, like uh, the living entities are eternally connected with the Lord, but uh, we have to, we have forgotten it uh, and we have fallen down. So, and my question is Maharaj, uh, you were saying like uh, we have to give up uh, the Asat Sangha, right? Uh, the, we have to give up the connection with the non-devotees. Uh, if it is with the friends or uh, the working place, okay, we can uh, have a limitation with them. But if it is within the family, then how can we give up uh, that uh, association? Well, Srila Prabhupada gives the example of what actually constitutes association. He says affection for. When you develop affection for another living entity, then you're in that association. So we may have to carry on family affairs or business affairs, but we should do it simply as a duty. Um, and Prabhupada would use the example with, um, I mean, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used the example with family members, especially husband and wife. He says the, uh, the wife, she has, she's a very dutiful and faithful wife. And she has a husband, but she also has a lover and she's not so interested in her husband. She's more interested in her lover. And for her husband not to suspect uh, her relationship with her lover, she carries on her material duties very nicely, but in her heart, She's always thinking, when can I meet my lover? So this type of consciousness is that when we're, we have to do, I mean, we're at least in a certain stage of life, we have to fulfill certain duties to occupation or to family members. But it shouldn't be done simply in order to enjoy that situation. It's more like a responsibility. We just carry it out. But at the same time, if we can somehow or other encourage those we come in contact to become Krishna conscious, then we can do great service to, to them and also please the, the Supreme Lord. But you have to be strong in order to do that. Strong in the sense that you don't get dragged down. But family attachment is very strong in this world. Uh, and therefore, it, it's, it's hard to extricate oneself from that. The only way you can actually do that in terms of the emotional attachment is to become really strongly attached to Krishna. 
Therefore, we have to hear about Krishna, develop our love for Krishna through chanting Krishna's name, associating with devotees. And then when it comes to family responsibilities, it becomes just the routine. It doesn't become a source of happiness. No, Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah, uh, we don't know. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, what I, what I say is easy to explain, but very hard to carry out, so. Yeah. <laughs> it, because of the attachment is there. But we just have to get more and more attached to Krishna, that's all. And if we can bring our friends and family members along, then that's great service. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for that clarity. So we have to uh, do our duties. We have to carry on our duties, uh, like as a responsibility, which is uh, given to us. And uh, so we have to be quiet and patient so that everything will fall on line. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nita Mataji, for the beautiful question. And thank you, Maharaj, for such a beautiful answer. So amazing. Yes, that, that wife that is cooking for husband or thinking for Krishna, our position should be that. Doing our material duties, but on the other hand, thinking for our real lover who is Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. What a beautiful answer. I First time I understood that clearly, that concept of uh, Srila Prabhupada explaining this wife cooking and then thinking of lover. Such a beautiful answer. Thank you, Maharaj. Our uh, senior, His Grace Sukhakara Prabhu, please go ahead. Ah, Hare Krishna, Sandhamani Maharaj, accept my humble respect to the lotus feet. This is Sukhakara Krishna Das from Chennai. Now, uh, as uh, the Srila Prabhupada's lecture, I've heard that each senses of the animal, the fish getting caught because of the taste, the elephant because of the touch, so I don't know how to explain that. So all the five, they're getting stuck up. Whereas the human being, at the same time, all the five senses are diving against these lusty propensities. Now, uh, we are, we are also seen, Savai Mana Krishna Padar Vindyar Vacham Sivaykunda Gunano Varnane. The Ambarish Maharaj, how he's using all the five senses. Theoretically, it is there. But uh, the people who are struggling they are not able, though they are practicing Krishna Khan, they have to, you know, take like the tortoise is given how to take out all the uh, legs inside. Can you just explain on that concept that how a practicing devotee struggling, theoretically knowing, but practically going through a lot of difficulties, how to stop that? <laughs> well, I would just say increase your association with devotees more and more it can increase your spiritual activities more and more and, and then you get ruchi and there's one stage of bhakti it's called ruchi ruchi means sweet taste when the sweet taste develops then the eagerness to to become krishna consciousness becomes fixed and at the same time one doesn't become so much entangled or struggled it becomes easier to to somehow or other go along with what we have to do as a daily. It just becomes routine. That's all. It's almost like, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would say that he, he would take every day his uh, his uh, bath before lunch, but he did it almost unconsciously as routine. You know. So in the same way, yeah, we have to struggle, but we have to struggle. We should be struggling to use more of our time, energy, and becoming Krishna conscious. That's all. For some of us, we need to increase the, the quantity of our, our devotional life. And for others, we need to increase the quality of our devotional life. But in both cases, an increase in any one of these two will help us to diminish this struggle that we are going through to somehow become Krishna conscious. Just don't give Maya any time. <laughs> That's all. Maharaj, one more question. Actually, this question, that was not mine. Some of the devotees, when we talk, take classes, they will ask. So I was not able to give the answer. No, I understood that. Always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. 
now this bhakti sangha has really helped me a lot because they have so many good classes one in the afternoon bhagavatam and the evening chaitanya uh, bhagavat and then some other classes and all and i have got my own classes so in a day out of 24 hours i am spending 10 hours in all these things i am retired now i am a chartered accountant retired and around 6 hours i sleep Still, I find that eight hours I'm missing where, though I'm spending my old mother, 85-year-old, I spent some time with her. So, I'm still greedy and not able to make full justice. As you said, no, never allow Maya to come. Maya is not coming. I'm not watching TV. I'm not reading newspaper. I'm not saving TV. But still, there is here and there, some time is lost. And uh, uh, so, I want to make it 100% remember Krishna and 0% for Yeah, I think I think you're just in a hurry to get back to the spiritual world. <laughs> All your blessings, Maharaj. Your blessings. Well, I'm not. I think I, that's, I'm not, that's good. I'm not, that's good. I'm not but, qualified, <laughs> but I'm just uh, really thinking of blessings. Your Prabhupada's disciples. So you have definitely Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhi. Just we are getting some time to associate that. It is a big sukriti for all of us, Maharaj. Thank you very much, Maharaj. We need your continued blessings. Mm -hmm. Ashirvad. Hare Krishna. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sukhakara Prabhu. I'm pretty positive uh, you asked on my behalf all of that because how much association you have to devote is nobody get in, in this group. So thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful answer again. Association is everything. And Maharaj, he is in hurry. And we all should have that hurry, I think. <laughs> to go back to God. <laughs> Thank you, Sukhaka uh, Prabhu. I'm just, I'm just acting. I'm not in a hurry. I'm just, uh, just, uh, just showing off that song. Sorry. Uh, no, Prabhu, no. You're an amazing devotee, Prabhu. Please give your association every day, Sukhaka Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Because I like your identity. The way you talk, you are a real, wonderful. Utsahan is always there. Always smiling and with, full of joy. and You're filled with Krishna consciousness. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Jyoti Mataji, Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, Lalitangi Mataji is spotlighted here. So, Mataji, oh, please read okay. one. Lalitangi Mataji and Prabhuji, Hare Krishna, Dhanva Pranam. Please go ahead. Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. Our Guru Sushila Prabhupada. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. We are missing you, Maharaj, and uh, thanking you so much for your wonderful, wonderful association. So nice to uh, remember your classes and especially your dance, Maharaj. Madhava Prabhu Skirtan. It was so nice to be with you and your family. It was just wonderful. It was so some, of my, some of my most uh, memorable moments when I was there in, in, in Toronto, just being with you and your family. Maharaj, you... Costlessly mercy. Um, so, Maharaj, uh, in your class, you said that how we are all like actors on the stage, we are putting up, but our original identity is different. And uh, we don't uh, mix with the material energy, but still we are determined to continue this. Um, looking, for, looking for happiness here and then going from life after life after life. Um, Why, I mean, um, what my question is, it's true that we are spiritual energy and we don't get nothing here, but still, why are we continuing our uh, search here and continuing our lives uh, here? <laughs> uh, attachment. <laughs> You have to transfer that to attachment to Krishna. If you see the material energy and you think there's something there for your happiness, then that's the problem. If you see the material energy as simply as Krishna's energy to be used in his service, then you're free. That's all. So how you how you how you interact with and how do you understand the material energy material energy can take you into this false sense of enjoyment or it can provide you an opportunity to serve the lord mm -hmm. 
And therefore the material energy in one sense becomes a source of happiness because it connects us with Krishna. So that's not, that's actually devotional service. And then that material energy is no more, no longer defined as material. It actually takes on its nature. It's actually spiritual when it's used in the service of the Lord. So Bhakti Vinoda course says, Manaso Deho Geho, you know, get you more arpilu to arpade nanda kishor. He goes through a whole list of things that he's in contact with. And he says, it all belongs to you. <laughs> we come into this world with nothing. And in the meantime, we're, you know, we, we collect a whole bunch of stuff and we think, boy, I got a nice collection. <laughs> Well, even if you had a good collection, use it for Krishna's service. That's all. And teach your children how to become devotees. Educate them in Krishna consciousness. And then that, that's, that's real parenthood. Because you're giving them something that will be eternal, their eternal benefit. And you're also benefited by giving in them because when you give something about if you give Krishna to others, you also get Krishna while you give it to others. That's true. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Um, very grateful for your association. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for... Uh, Giving me so much nice assistance while I was in Toronto it was fantastic, along with the association. Well, I, I, I thought you were really nice. I was thinking, well, Alita Tangi is so nice, but then when I met your husband, I found out he's even better. <laughs> you gave us a chance, Maharaj. Uh, to be, to be That's the biggest thing, Maharaj. Great, very grateful to you, Maharaj. And looking forward to again, yeah, serving and being in your association. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, like Tangi Mataji and Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Beautiful, beautiful answer. Manas Deho Geho, Jukuchamor, Arpilutuva Padin and the Kishore. Every everything we should surrender to Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. What a beautiful answer. Uh, His Grace uh, Parlada Anand Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Raj Prabhuji, for allowing me to speak. And Maharaj, as always, I'm just not asking any question. I just want uh, you to know that I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> and I accept my humble obeisances. Uh, there are some some uh, some slokas came to my mind, and I just wanted to you know share. Uh, like, you know, we are all in family and, uh, you know, how, how to, you know, rise above this attachment with the family. Uh, the sloki is in the fifth canto, Sursabdev Maharaj teachings to his sons. He says, Yeva, yeva maise kruta sohrudartha, janesu dehambar varti kesu, gruhesu jayati jarati matsu na priti yukta yavad arthasya loke. So what I do is, you know, uh, I, just like in cooking, you put salt as much as required, not more, not less. <laughs> so that's how I deal with, uh, with the family affairs and all that, thinking that then one day I have to get out of this whole scenario. And uh, <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me start preparing for that as much as I can. <laughs> and that we can do just like uh, uh, Sukhdev Goswami tells uh, 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 Maharaj Pariksit, he says, Samya Vavisitahi Buddhi Rajasthita Satama Vasudev Kathami Jata Vasudev Kathami Jata Naistikirati. So, more we come in touch with great souls like you, Sri Prabhupada, and all his sincere disciples, and you know, all this Bhakti Sangh. Yeah, it's a great. I see this Bhakti Sangh 
as Vishnu do to themselves, just like fallen Adamis like us, you know, like me especially. So, you know, this is really, really a diamond kind of uh, opportunity I, we have every morning. I, it's the morning here in Las Vegas. So, <laughs> so this is what I just wanted to put a little input at your feet and, you know, uh, look for your blazing marriage. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for those beautiful verses. We really illustrated the points you were making nicely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Paladananda Prabhu Ki. Thank you, Paladananda Prabhu. You are very true. Uh, these Matajis, Shamagari Mataji, Nita Mataji, Nita Mataji, and so many other Matajis, they are Vishnu Dutas actually. Because if they wouldn't have started all this, <laughs> that, that's true, very true, very true. Yeah. I, was, I was sleeping this time. This is like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. at my time. I was sleeping and I was just doing not nonsense. And I'm, I'm here because of this group and it's just amazing. It gives me a beautiful start of the day and remains with me during the day. So that's so beautiful, so truly said. It was so good. You know, all of them, I really want to touch their feet and get their blessings, you know. It's not an I, easy... It's yeah. not an easy job. You're right. It's not. A, it's very difficult to arrange speakers different dates. It's so right. difficult, but they are doing it so beautifully. So thank you, Prabhu. Very yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have we have Asha there. She's been waiting. Asha Mataji. Asha Mataji. Asha Mataji. Time. Thank you, Pranam Swamiji, Pranam Maharaj, Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Jai Ho. Jeho Pramaraj, uh, when I knew that it was you coming today, I woke up at 3 a.m. in the morning and I was just waiting for the call to start. So I was just panting, <laughs> panting and I finished uh, 20, like 16 and then 10 more rounds. So by the time you arrived, so I was just so happy to see you, Maharaj, my my humble obedience is at your feet. I have one question, Maharaj, always as I have. Uh, the question, I, I just made a note of it, so I don't forget it. It's actually, uh, if you have physically committed offenses like uh, Ajama, like I know I have committed a lot of sins, so the body, especially the body. So still experientially, if one gets the exposure to who am I, and suddenly the whole life takes a U-turn by his grace, why does it happen even to a sinful person if it happens? And as you said, there is the feeling, when can I meet my beloved all the time? And the Lord has not given any attachments so that you can remain unatt unattached at every moment. So when your so-called uh, relatives, which are not uh, primary attachments, but very far relatives, when they say you are a normal person, you have committed a lot of sins, you're not perfect, this is not possible, so, you know, it's not going to happen. So then there is a feeling that comes suddenly somewhere uh, out there that, oh, I'm a sinful person. I, I'm not a perfect person. So how do, I'm not a perfect devotee. So I don't think this realization, what I experientially got, is maybe my imagination. Or maybe I cannot do this. This birth, I cannot. So maybe I'll try next birth. Who is the one who is getting that feeling? And uh Patita Pavana Hetu Tava Avatar, Mosam or Patita Prabhu, Napa Evar. The most sinful persons become the candidates for Lord Chaitanya's mercy. He wants to, when he, uh, when Nityananda and uh, Haridas Thakur went out to preach Krishna consciousness, they were looking for the persons that are most unlikely. And they found Jagai and Marai. And then Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda delivered Jagai and Marai just to show that their, their mercy is the complete mercy. Even such sinners as Jagai and Marai, Marai could reach the platform of devotional service. So no one is exempt. And Lord Chaitanya likes to give his mercy to the fallen souls. So... Uh, Pious credits, that may be helpful in getting a foothold in devotional service, but the success is the mercy of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord is very strong. Lord Chaitanya is extremely merciful. And he's sending his, he's sending his devotees everywhere in the world to distribute his mercy. 
in the form of this Harinam Sankirtan movement. So, so Maharaj, my last question is, when one always gets the feeling that there is no time to waste, and it's a thought of the individual or the desire of the soul that there is no time to waste by the mercy of Lord? That, that is a, a, a certain stage of bhakti that one attains. It's called um, the stage of ashakti, where it's about the eighth, the seventh stage of Krishna consciousness development, where one becomes upset and annoyed if they waste any time other than doing devotional service. If you, if you observe Srila Prabhupada's activity, he was like that. He would not waste a moment <laughs> so yeah. that that is a quality a certain quality that one takes on when they get on a certain level of devotional service they just want to use every min min minute for krishna consciousness and sometimes they will become upset if someone wastes their time <laughs> So, Maharaj, I cannot go to the temple here because it's quite far and I cannot commute because I don't drive and uh, sometimes I have classes. So what I do is that most of the time, if I'm not able to go to the temple for any services, I try to be in the Bhakti Sangha, all the classes that I attend maximum. And I always listen to the Hare Krishna mantra if or some other talks or anything. 24-7, but whenever, even when I go to sleep, I keep the Hare Krishna mantra of Prabhupada Maharaj and I go to sleep. Uh, but always there is a feeling that I don't have a time to waste. I cannot waste my time. And because I want to be at your feet as your humble servant to serve you and to be your take shelter under you. For, so for that, again, that feeling comes that I have to do that 16 rounds because I don't have time to waste. And yes, Maharaj, I'm also a heart patient. So anytime the heart can stop. So I really know that there is no time to waste. And it really makes me sad that I'm not able to go to the temple. Uh, I'm not able to uh, recite shlokas like other devotees. So will I really be able to do uh, you know, the true bhakti? I, I, I don't know if that is the feeling of the mind and body or I don't know what it is. Yeah, a little more association will, will, will relieve you of this uh, this this uh, spiritual anxiety. It's spiritual anxiety, but it re requires some more association. So, as you mentioned, because of your situation, you can't associate so much, and you don't drive. Try to find that association through the media, if you can. And whenever there's an opportunity, you know, you can also invite devotees to come to your home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maharaj, I'll do that. And, and I'm just taking the citizenship. I was not planning to take the citizenship of Canada, but I'm taking the citizenship of Canada this year because I can come and visit you, Maharaj, all the time, whenever I want to, because I'm all, I'm all alone. God has not given me anybody or anywhere to go. So I can visit anytime. If you're with your permission, I can visit you so that at least this life as uh, Ajamal was sinful, I don't want me to die I don't want the soul to die sinful with this body, Maharaj. Well, just stay enthusiastic and keep your focus on Krishna conscious activities and look for the associate, look for the opportunity to associate and gradually you'll become purified and go back home, back to God. Thank you, Maharaj, with your blessings. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Shamataji. Thank you, Mataji. Beautiful, uh, beautiful insights. You might have some uh, material heart issues, but there is a lot of Krishna in your heart. So, and we, you are like, <laughs> you're, you're a big part, a part of this family, this Bhakti Sangha Mataji's family. So please give your association every day. We all seek your association. Thank you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Jai Ho. Uh, Puja has been waiting a long time. Puja Mataji. Hare Krishna. From Haridwar. <laughs> Hare, Hare Krishna, Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances, first of all. <clears throat> Maharaj, I, I don't have any question, but I just want to thank you. As last lecture, maybe uh, before one month now, uh, you said that uh, I have a query I uh, that uh, 
is i am able to recite damodar ashtakam as all the time as one devotee asked me that way i have to keep a little lamp with me always if i want if i want to recite damodar ashtakam each and every time so you i i, I answered that question last time i i said that the question to you that is is that any need to keep a lamp always with me yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so you, you said that oh, there is no need to no 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 just keep the lamp in your consciousness make your you consciousness that there is, make your consciousness uh, the, the lamp <laughs> so uh, but just i want to uh, remind all the devotees uh, assembled devotees here that the countdown has already begun only 27 days are left for janmashtami so we have to be prepared for our damo that i want to tell here guru maharaj good you make every day janmashtami <laughs> every day is janma and, and krishna is taking birth constantly in our heart as we chant the holy names of the lord so every day can be janmashtami Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Pranam, to you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Nice to hear you again. Thank you. Thank you, Pooja Mata Ji. Thank you for attending every day also. Thank you, Maharaj. So beautiful. Krishna Shalamashmi is every day, and it is going every day somewhere in this universe. So many kalpas and so many so beautiful Maharaj. Thank you so much. Uh, His Grace Devananda Pandit Prabhu Ji. What a beautiful name. Hare Krishna, Devananda Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada. All glories to Dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to the Vaishnavas. I just got one realization. Uh, Ajamila was saved and delivered uh, only because uh, of his attachment to his family. To... that that we are solely uh, we are carefully advised to avoid uh, that's why i therefore i urge everyone to treat their loved ones very carefully and responsibility personally i am not uh, going to treat my, this as no, their association I, with I them think, as, a, think, as an think, asad sangha i think you i think you said something that is incorrect Uh, Ajamil was not saved because of his attachment to his family. He was saved because he chanted the holy names of the Lord without offense. Sorry, That, but I can't agree. He well, was I'm sorry, because, because you his, can't his agree, you don't, you don't child. understand. He, you read the script, read the, read the book. If you read the purports and listen to the commentaries by the Acharyas, they explain his his liberation was due to namabas chanting of the name of narayan not to his family attachments <laughs> why did he why did he chant uh, this name because, because he loved his son well because the only one the only one who was close to him well if his son was named something material and he had love for his son he wouldn't he wouldn't have got Uh, any any liberation the name of narayan is the whole point try to understand that because he chanted narayan's name without offense Prabhupada's, everything around is narayan everything around is narayan this come world on. is narayan, narayan. Get, away, get away from your impersonal understanding this personal understanding this is not it's impersonal. impersonal i'm telling you it's impersonal I not agree sorry I'm sorry well anyway what just read the books and you'll understand hear from Srila Prabhupada and you'll understand you're just speculating that's all I just love my my relatives this all well but I you, can, lo you can love your relatives that's nice but give them krishna yeah. consciousness and then I'm not I'm not going to avoid association with them I don't think this association with my relatives is that is it an so called asad sangha This real sangha. If if you make them devotees, fine. I can make them devotees only when I can give them my love. 
Go ahead. Give them your love, but give them your love in the form of Krishna consciousness. That's real love. Love means to do something good to a person that benefits the person. Love is not some um, emotional feeling that you that comes and goes. Love means to serve for the benefit of the person you are serving. That is love. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Devananda Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj. So beautiful. When we can connect everything to Krishna, that is the reality of life. Yes, we should uh, we should be connecting every single thing. Our family should be our responsibility, but connected to Krishna. If we can offer them as servants of Krishna back to Krishna, so that is the that is the beauty. What is coming from Krishna is going back to Krishna. That is the real service. So he gave us everything. We, we should offer them back to Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Such a beautiful ba answer. Bhakti ba Vinod Thakur had a big family. <clears throat> family. But he gave his family Krishna consciousness. So true, Maharaj. So true. Uh, so that so, is love. Maharaj, Sukhakara Prabhu has another question, I think. Maharaj, I really like your answers. That's why I'm asking. Don't feel bad. I'm disturbing you so many times. Maharaj, uh, now this the Damodara Ashram I like so much. Every day morning, evening, I'm putting lamp on all the three Friday. After Mangalati, Samsara Dava, I like this too. Nama Miswaram Sachit. So I'm doing it. It's not often because I'm only calling Damodara every day. Just 10 minutes I'm doing that. And uh, about uh, this Krishna, Sarva Dharma and Tarijaja, uh, Krishna told, come and surrender unto me and Forget all the religions. I will take out the sins and take you back home, back to Godhead. But as Chaitan Mahaprabhu told, you don't have to do that. Jare dekho, tare ko, Krishna Upadesh, grihe thako, bane thako, sada hari bole dako. You be at home, just keep chanting. But Nityan the Prabhu, he went out and jagai mother who were raksasas, who didn't want to chant, he made them chant. So I am catching hold of Nityan the Prabhu first, and then Gauranga Mahaprabhu, and Srimati Radharani, and then Krishna. Is my understanding correct? The what I am. I'm, I love everybody, but I think Nitan Prabhu, the Adi Guru, can is the main person because he's even rascals he saved. So I am the biggest rascal. So I'm waiting in the queue in the first. I should get connected. Is it a selfish mentality that Jeev there has to be done? But I'm spending so much time in this Sangha and all, and some classes I'm giving. So I feel I should become like Vasudev Datta, helping the whole world. So there are a lot of things I'm doing, whether I'm doing Namaruchi more and Jeev there is coming down. Vaishnava Seva Maharaj come, I do. So, I am not able to equally distribute 33% on all the trees. So, how do I go about Maharaj? Mm. Just keep going. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know, you're, you're describing your life as a devotee and it sounds, to me, it sounds like you're absorbed. So. <laughs> no, I'm like, just showing off. I'm showing off. But anyway, I'm just I'm like just, I said, like I said before, you you just you're just tired of this material world and you want to get back to God. Yeah, that was correct. I'm very tired. I want to go back home. But in some uh, Mara says you should say wherever you are, I'm ready to come back also, but serve you. But I don't want to take that step. I'm selfish. I want to go back to Krishna. I don't want to come back to the world. Okay. But even if you That's but you good. said that the, if he orders you, you should go to his. It's, it's a hellish plant auto. I'm scared because I'm not so pure to even go and preach. And so I'm begging that I should go back to Golo County. Right. Prabhupada said very few people want to go back to Godhead. So if anyone wants to go back to Godhead, Krishna takes special attention. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. And Lord Pranam. Thank you, Thank you Sukhara Prabhu, again for jumping in. You seem very tired, Prabhu. Come to Canada, I'll massage your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Not, not bodily. <laughs> hey, Krishna. See, uh, you, you, your, your devotion is tra attracting everybody. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I also want to say one more thing. You, you chanted today three Vaishnava bhajans, Maharaj. And I was opening them one by one. So beautiful, Maharaj. You know, so many bhajans. You chanted uh, Mayar Bhase, Jasho Beshe. And then you chanted uh, Manas Deho Geho. And then you answered uh, 
patit pavan hai tu so so beautiful bhajans our acharyas has given us maharaj thank you so much for chanting those bhajans too i love uh, i love bengali bhajans i am from punjab but i still love bengali bhajans they are so beautiful so <laughs> attractive yes maharaj maharaj there is lalita mata ji on uh, lalita mata ji hare krishna dhanva pranam hare krishna please set my most humble obeisances at the dust of your lotus feet um i just wanted to say that um it's such a such great mercy to be in uh, the association of you and um i knew um your sister when i lived in puerto rico over 40 years ago i didn't know that you you joined um that her brother was a devotee and um i always think that whenever you come it's um, such 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 mercy and recently i just had finally gone after covid to sadhu sangha to to be with devotees and um it was such a, a great experience my my motivation was that so many of us will be leaving this world and i want to be with them before and um uh, yesterday i got a call that ervasi my god sister had left and um i had spoken with her at the festival just before giriraj swami started to give a lecture in the morning and she first nirakula came and hugged me and then ervasi was passing to sit about two seats for me and i said ervasi i said how are you and she told me she had driven 14 and a half hours to get there and then she had cooked for 9 hours and um and i was just so amazed and i thought to myself wow i don't have that kind of body or ability to do that kind of uh, extraordinary service i i thought well krishna is probably going to keep her here till she's 100 years old because she has so much energy and i was just um feeling like uh what mercy it was to have to be in the presence of people like you that have never given up their service and are always so um uh, with so much mercy for everyone even when we're going the wrong direction you redirect us if we're if we're we're misunderstanding and i um i listened to shivara maharaj his podcast about ervasi because ervasi was pivotal in his life and she basically um had preached to him and his wife when he joined in montreal mm -hmm. and then and then basically he said she was so attractive in the way she presented krishna consciousness and and then she actually taught him uh, uh how to do deity worship uh because her husband shri pati was the temple president in montreal so shivara maharaj taught me how to do deity worship when i was sent from montreal to winnipeg and so the fact is is that the link between all the devotees is so so such a powerful family this is the family we need to be attached to and i'm so thankful for you and i just wanted you, you to know that thank you yeah. thank you very much that was so nice i learned so much just by hearing what you said and especially to re get remembrance of ervasi um um I met her one time in Los Angeles <clears throat> and it was such a nice experience. I was in the sitting in the temple in uh in LA and uh, she just came in and and then she came by me and start talking and we start talking and then my first impression was oh this lady is very humble. <laughs> she was her humility was just overflowing. I was just amazed. Yes. And um that was my one and only experience with her but now hearing from you then I realize she did so much wonderful service to Shila Prabhupada's mission yeah uh and obviously she her destination is glorious <laughs> Yes yes anyway thank you so much my dear Maharaj Hare Krishna Thank you Lalita Hare Krishna Jai Ho Hare Krishna Thank you Mother Lalita Hare Krishna certainly um urvashi mother urvashi will be doing some devotional service right now with krishna cooking or or making some garlands for him for sure such a beautiful devotee just by listening of her i was getting enlightened so i imagine you having a association that's so beautiful thank you mother lalita thank you so much hari krishna uh, maharaj parlad anand prabhu has again his hand raised hari krishna parlad anand prabhu again <laughs> <laughs> Maharaj, Maharaj, everybody, everybody wants to talk to you again and again, Maharaj. 
<laughs> you're so you greedy, mean? you know, about your we association. You know? <laughs> that I, at the last moment, I said, before Maharaj goes away, let me let me have some blessing from him. Uh, so in, 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 in connection with uh, Sukha, Sukha Krishna Das Prabhuji, he has developed desire to go to, uh, you know, to uh, Krishna Lok and serve there. But, you know, most of us, I am biased, especially myself, I'm so unlucky that I still have not developed that desire. You know, I'm still stuck at uh, material world level. But, you know, Pradhan Maharaj has said, Naivo dvijeta par duratya vaitaranya stradvirya gayan mahamruta magna chitta. So even if I go or, go or no go, if I am my, my chitta is become absorbed in Krishna Katha, then I'm very happy, you know. Plus, you know, he says, Maya Sukham Bharto would be the mood, Vimudan. So why not help some Vimudan like myself and others with, uh, with Krishna Katha? And that is as good as reaching Lord Krishna's service anywhere. You know, that was my little realization. <laughs> I thought, you know, to share with you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you very much for your Hare association. Krishna, Hare 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 well, thank you, Kalarananda. Hare Krishna. I, I really am greedy for all this, uh, you know, association we get every morning. So this so such a such a treasure <laughs> for us. <laughs> thank you very much for allowing to speak. Thank you, and we thank Shamagori for creating this nice sangha of wonderful Vaishnavas who come together regularly. So, Hare Krishna, Shamagori Hare Krishna Maharaj. Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances of Krishna Shri Prabhupada. I need blessings from everyone. I need the blessings from you, Maharaj. I am the most fallen, that's why my claim is first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, uh, I'm going to say something to that. Prabhupada said, when someone said, I was the most fallen, they said it to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, you're not the most anything. <laughs> so, Very cool. Don't look for any distinction. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we we might feel ourselves the most fallen, but keep it quiet. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the fact that we're in a material world is an indication that we're fallen. So, that's obvious already. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj for your association and very excited to welcome you in Charlotte. I'll be, I'll be coming soon. So a uh, couple weeks we'll be there. Thank you, Shamagori Mataji. Thank you for your efforts and thank you for creating all this Bhakti Sangha. So we all know what you are. You don't need to say, but thank you, Shamagori Mataji. Thank you, Hare Krishna. No problem. Hare Krishna Mataji. Shamagori doesn't have to go back to Godhead. She's already back to Godhead. <laughs> she is already there. Yes. yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank you, Maharaj. What a beautiful answer. Because of all of your mercy, Maharaj. Nothing is right. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah, Shamagori Mataji is very enthusiastically preaching. And so that's how she has collected all these devotees to help. And almost, so he's a almost 10 years every day doing this program for 10 years. Wow, amazing. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Maharaj and, and devotees from all over the world, Canada, USA, India, Dubai. Yeah. Maharaj from everywhere devotees join this group. So it is such a big effort. Such a beautiful yeah. service. To you. It's efforts from uh, every devotee, Maharaj, not just me. <laughs> they just put me in front. That's it. Everybody is working in the back. That's why. Yeah, that, that is what I'm saying. Everybody is working in the back for you. <laughs> so you can go, go hand. I, mean, so this is not nice I think, I think we... Answers. I think I have the last question, Maharaj. How can we make our breathing a chanting? How can we make our breathing a chanting? Because Prabhupada, then he was uh, some doctors went dig dig. It was like Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Then in the the doctor did not find dig 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 dig. The heartbeat was Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So you being Prabhupada so close, you can tell how we can make twenty four by seven, even by going here, there, toilet, everywhere <laughs> chanting. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> one thing you can start off with, and this is a practical matter, is before you do anything, she had six, your 16 rounds. After you rise, take care of your, you know, your hygiene, and then do just 16 rounds. Don't do anything. Shut off the cell phone. <laughs> Leave it alone. Those who make their rounds the most important part of the day will also be able to chant more and more naturally throughout the day. If we push our rounds to different places throughout the day, unless it's an emergency, then uh, we'll never develop that attraction for, for chanting. We get up so we can chant our rounds. <laughs> That's the reason why we get up. <laughs> Maharaj, they'll get up at 4 o'clock and start chanting, 4 to 7.30. So you want me to chant and then take bath or take bath and chant? That's up to you. <laughs> I can't tell you that one. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sukhakara Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ma, thank you. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to everybody, Raj. All of you, I feel you're all Goloka people. Come here to just give blessing to the whole world. I, I, do, I do have an, uh, a, um, a flight to Detroit this morning and I have yeah. to get ready, ready for it. So yeah, I thank have you to very say, much. say goodbye to all of you right now. Thank Although, you, Maharaj. Thank oh, you. This is a been a beautiful yeah. satsang with all of you. Thank you. Maharaj, so many Thank devotees you much. love you, Maharaj. There are so many Maharaj, nice people. Maharaj, <laughs> Maharaj. And, uh, and one, actually, Maharaj. Actually, one, 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 Maharaj. One, 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 one Mataji has joined today. I have brought it to Nadarat Maharaj Disciple. Lavanya yes. Mataji, she has joined today. So she is very, very happy. Thank Lavanya Mataji. Thank you so much, Maharaj, again. Thank you. There are so many beautiful messages and they are thanking all of you, Maharaj, for the class. Thank you, Maharaj. And we all know we are, we are getting late for the flight, Maharaj. So dear devotees, Maharaj has to go right now because he has a flight. He has to prepare. So Maharaj will come again to us uh, in the near future. Shamagari Mataji will invite Maharaj and Maharaj will yes. and come here. Yes. So dear devotees, let us pay our obeisances to Maharaj. One